In class activity three, sketch the root locus for the following system and then determine the range of K for a proportional control compensator, GC of Z equal to K, that will result in a stable system. So once again, the first thing we're going to do is sketch the root locus. So here is our imaginary axis. Here's the real axis. And we have a zero at negative one. And we have two poles at 0 0.5 and at one. So now I'm going to make a very crude sketch of our unit circle here. Just imagine this is a circle, okay? And then we're gonna sketch the root locus. So what happens is the two open loop poles will come together and then they're going to split apart symmetric about the real axis. And then over here, they're going to come back together and one's going to go to the zero and the other's going to go to a zero and negative infinity. So this is as K approaches infinity, as K approaches infinity. And they start over here at K equals zero and K equals zero. So next we'll mark some points on here by first doing the same bilinear transformation that we did before. So if I close the transfer function, T of Z is K times Z plus one over Z minus one times Z minus 0 0.5 plus K times Z plus one. And this simplifies to K times Z plus one over z squared plus the quantity k minus 1.5 z plus k plus 0 0.5. So then t of s, using our bilinear transformation, is t of z, where z is equal to s plus 1 over s minus 1. So t of s is equal to s times s minus one over s squared plus the quantity one minus two k over two k s plus three over two k. So now we're gonna create our Routh Hurwitz table, s squared, s to the first power, s to the zero. The first row is one, and three over two K. The second row is one minus two K over two K zero. And the third row is three over two K. So one minus two K over two K must be greater than zero yields K is less than one half. Our other constraint is three over two K must be greater than zero and that yields that K must be greater than zero, which we know because K must always be greater than zero. So for stability, K must be between zero and one half. So that means that the point where this crosses back over the unit circle right around here must be K is equal to one half. If we solve for the poles when K is equal to one half, we get one with an angle of 60 degrees. So notice that the sketch is a little off because the other side should have crossed right around here. K equal to one half. So that's one with an angle of negative 60 degrees. So those are the closed loop poles when the system once again becomes unstable. So now let's suppose we want to design this system to have a damping ratio zeta equal to 0 0.77, a natural frequency equal to 0 0.15 pi over t, a settling time 
TS over T equals 15, or a time to peak, TP over T equals 15. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how we use the design charts in order to design a system to meet given specifications. Recall that our general form for our characteristic equation is z squared plus k minus 1.5z plus k plus 0 0.5. So this is root locus design where we're going to adjust the k to meet these design characteristics. So let's go to the chart. So first we have a chart here that has constant damping ratio curves and constant natural frequency curves. So if we want to design for 0 0.15 pi over t, we know that that's got to be somewhere in between the 0.2 pi over t and 0.1 pi over t curves. So we're going to just kind of estimate it about right here. And that we have a constant damping ratio of zeta equal to 0.07, and that's this curve here. So the intersection of those two lines gives us our desired closed loop hole. And our closed loop hole is 0 0.7 plus or minus j, 0 0.2. So let's slide down a bit so you can see the other end here. So we extend these lines. So if the intersection is here, this one goes to intersect with this axis to give me the imaginary part of the pole. And this one drops down here to intersect with this axis to give me the real part of the pole. So here we have another design chart. This one has constant damping ratio, constant settling time, and constant time to peak. So if we design this once again so that zeta equals to 0 0.7, that's this curve here. And we want it to have TP over T equal 15. So that would be somewhere around the intersection in here. Or TS over T equals 15. So that's somewhere between these two concentric circles. So that would be somewhere also right around here. So this point, when we drop it down, gives us our desired closed loop pole once again. So estimating once again, we would say that the imaginary part is 0 0.2 and the real part is approximately 0 0.7. So we would select a closed loop pole 0 0.7 plus or minus J 0 0.2. So going back to our problem, delta D of Z is going to equal Z minus 0 0.7 plus j 0 0.2, z minus 0 0.7 minus j 0 0.2, which equals z squared minus 1.4z plus 0 0.56. And when we equate coefficients, we get that the gain k must be equal to 0 0.06 to satisfy these design constraints. And this concludes today's lecture on discrete time systems design using gain adjustment with root locus as well as steady state error.